there was a nice um, there was a nice um, difference between the opinions uh, in the conference of the uh, current U.S. ambassador mm -hmm. and the past U.S. ambassador. The current U.S. ambassador is saying that everything is fundamentally nice and uh, we have a super great uh, mobilized civil society and this is the Ukrainian uh, future moment and uh, there's no way of going back. Whereas the the former U.S. ambassador was a little bit more outspoken saying that, uh, guys, you know, the reforms are going but not as fast and it's not very surprising because you have new ministers and uh, reformers but the issue is not whether they want to do reforms but whether they can do reforms mm -hmm. because um, the top is still entrenched, that their leaders, their tops are conti continuing to be members of the previous system and so it's not clear that everything is shiny as the previous uh, um, as previously it was presented by the current ambassadors. And so, I don't know, if, what's, what's, what's your view on, on this? No, thing? that's a very good point. I would also add that, you know, many participants in the conference, they keep emphasizing that communication is the key. You have to go and advertise reforms. You should talk to people in a very simple language and tell them, this is the situation we have now. This is where we want to be. This is what we're going to do. This is fair. This is unfair. And I think, you know, the consensus view so far has been that the government is not doing enough outreach to the common people. They talk to investors, the IMF, um, you know, it's a very special group of people, but they should talk to people because you have to have political support from the people. They have to own reforms. And I think that's the danger indeed because what can happen is that you can convince people around you, 10,000 diplomats, uh, experts and the most aggressive civil society that everything is fine, that you know, we understand where we're going or we need to wait, there are all these bad oligarchs out there, but it's not clear the remaining 44 million point nine blah 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 yeah, blah they blah. Know, they Actually, know very little and yeah. they think it's a treason or you know, something murky is going and so, so we, 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 you, you did some uh, some analysis on the communication, right? With Twitter, this was an example. Uh, well, actually, we are taking a look on Twitter usage of our ministers, and uh, that's what actually what happens that many ministers do not have any Twitter account. Well, we can always say that Twitter is not used uh, by a journalist uh, or whoever, but, but still, it's very important, uh, you know, technique to communicate, to talk talk about reforms. And surprisingly, after our critique, one of the ministers even closed uh, the Twitter accounts which just says you know quite negative you know things about the so they, they do actually respond it's an example that uh, there is some so at least uh, it looks like the government is paying attention to you know what the civil society is pushing back but they're not doing enough in terms of explaining what they are doing absolutely absolutely that's what we think and actually one of the roles of Vox Ukraine is just to give you know constructive critique look guys uh, we've been uh, you know we've seen good practice and we want you to be better Okay, so there's another concern that just someone just brought up to me, and this concern is by a foreigner. He is on some mission, on some, uh, some ground, and he went uh, to visit the regions, and he's saying, guys, you're delusional here in your conference. Everyone is happy and everything is enthusiastic, <laughs> but you step out and you see in Vinitsa or you see in Brovary people who are out there at 4 a.m. in the morning uh, taking lines to get the subsidies. The subsidies are being, you know, processed with the speed one person per 20 minutes or something like that. If ridiculous because of incompetence or insufficient support and the people are getting very dissatisfied and this will be picked up by populists it will be picked up by political forces which are slightly out of power now but you know people are naming Timoshenko or Leshko or mm -hmm. others who are you know just waiting for the moment to pick up the electorate who is going to be dissatisfied with reform and I think that's very important here that the government actually first of all does something about the subsidies and not says oh we made the decision and it's gone you, you, you go to the regions and talk to you know they say make sure that in the regions there's civil society is engaged. Right. And second is the communication again, coming back to communication. And speed, you have to do it faster. I mean, you don't have a choice. I don't know. Like... I agree. You know, this regional outreach is very important because, you know, people in Kiev are very special in many respects. You have to talk to people in Lviv, Vinitsa, Odessa, Kharkiv. And um, I don't think there is much outreach in the government as there should be. So what can we do actually for outreach? We had these ideas to start uh, writing not or publishing not only in 
you know, Ukrainska Pravda or Liga, but try to do something in outreach. Well, to go to regions, let's say, we can take a look on Hromatsky. Hromatsky started in Kiev and then went to regions. Yeah, but Hromatsky is fantastic because they are doing it themselves. We, we are not a media outcome. And the problem is that, you know, you have to pay. I mean, it's, it's not a right. Yeah, it's, yeah, a, yeah. it's based on bribes in the regions. In, UK, in Kiev, no, no, it's realistic. Like in Kiev, you can come up and say this is good content. And the editors of not all, but the major outlets will take it for free. Whereas in the regions, you know, we try it and the story is you need to pay $200 per publication. So this, <laughs> this is a little, you know, talking about communication, you know, if you don't have a, an independent media in the regions, it's also very difficult to, you know, to, 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 to sort of build communication because they're not publishing anything unless they're being paid. And it's a little bit... What, what can be done? Yeah. Well, uh, it's just again, you know, maybe to have a call for some type of volunteers, you know, to control some local authorities because everybody carefully looks you know, what National Bank does, uh, what Gontarevo does, but they don't care that much what, you know, local uh, or like pers people, you know, do, or lo local officials do. And the I think thing we try to do is to have this mind sketch when people can submit their views about the economy, political system, and we make it very public. And, and it's so for the regions, yeah, right? It's for and people yes, from the regions. That's right. And we try to engage with those people, get them involved and you know, get their feedback, get their input. And I think it's very important to empower these people outside Kyiv. I agree. I completely agree because the, otherwise it looks like, again, there's vacuum outside of Kyiv uh, in terms of uh, sort of uh, political maturity of the civil society. And this is what, uh, you know, yeah, of course, Russia is on the east, mm -hmm. but if the Russia were on the we in the west, uh, there would still be some vacuum that the message you can send to the villages, the message, you know, whatever the message, because they, 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 they are no strong, you know, there are no strong local leaders or no strong independent media, or at least it's not as developed as it is in Kyiv, and that's, that's actually a national security concern.